Today we're building a wombat habitat. And how many of these can I do? Seemingly three. So I keep saying that red pandas are my favorite animals, but then I have deleted both of the red panda habitats. And I've built three wombat habitats. So who's the real favorite here? Although, to be fair, I do want to eventually make a really like wow, in your face red panda habitat. Some might call it a weenie. And when it comes to the three wombat habitats, I built one, renovated it, and now I've relocated it. So the relocation is what you're going to see today. And with all of the wombat habitats, they're not really supposed to be in your face. They're supposed to be kind of the wallflowers of habitats. So that's also what you're going to see today. It's not really an in your face wowser kind of ha habitat, but it's a nice habitat that you will like you will pass by and then it will be like, oh, that's a nice habitat. Oh, there's wombats. Like that's the entire idea when it comes to this habitat. Now, why are we building yet another wombat habitat? Because as I said, I've built a wombat habitat three times now in Naturalis. Or at least this is the third time. Well, that's because the first wombat habitat or the original one was way too large for them. Like the original wombat habitat was a hundred not a hundred a thousand square meters they wouldn't do it a hundred but th the original habitat was a thousand square meters and because you can only have two wombats like you can only have a couple of wombats you don't really need that space like you need i think at most like four or five hundred square meters which is exactly what today's habitat is it's kind of around 500 square meters of traversable area now, this place was supposed to actually become the emu habitat. So that's what this habitat was originally, or this place, not this habitat, but this place, was originally laid out for. Because it worked really well with the moat, because we have this big path going through the middle of the Australian area. And I kind of want for that entire path to be sitting in water, to kind of give it a bridge vibe. So that works really well with the emus because you want to keep the emus away from the guests because they might peck at you or something like they could become aggressive. And then on the other side, you would have like a dry moat because I didn't want to have this be an island. However, as I said, this habitat is like around 500 square meters and that's with all of the plants. So that's already a little bit lower. So at most it would be actually a thousand square meters. But then that doesn't take into account the moats. And then also, of course, all of the rocks and plants that I would place. So it would be around 500 square meters for the emus as well, which does work for wombats. I guess the ideal size for a wombat habitat. But for emus, especially if you want a group, like I want around five because... I can just imagine the chaos that five emus would bring compared to like two emus. So I wanted five emus and 500 square meters isn't really enough space to give them like a really nice looking habitat. And like emus and like kangaroos and koalas and a platypus, those are like the main star animals for the Australian area. Whereas wombats are, as I said, the wallflower. And we're like, a thousand square meters in their original habitat they just kind of got swallowed by the habitat where there were just not enough animals for the habitat to really feel alive and because of that the wombats didn't shine the habitat didn't shine so that got deleted well that and the playground because i think that i can now make a better playground because i mean i've just gotten better i mean with the splash pad I, i've learned a lot of things and the original playground just felt a little bit too safe. Like, where's the slide? Where, like, all of those, like, playground equipment that I was afraid of building, I now am just like, yeah, I want to do that. But anyways, I said something about, like, oh, this habitat is 500 square meters of traversable area for the wombats. Well, I wanted to make an interior for the wombats. Like, I wanted to have them have their burrows outside, but also have an indoor area for... The case of like it gets really cold and then they can get the wombats inside so that they don't like get too cold for like comfort and such. However, the doors that we ended up with are twice the size as the original doors that I had planned. 
I really thought like, oh, they are going to get through these doors. Like they are the size of the wombat. So it makes sense they would be able to get through. And you might think, oh, Poison, you know that like the animals in Planet Zoo, they have like, if you make a door the exact size of an animal, they won't fit because they have like the, their head box and such. Yes, and I, I did take that into account. And here's the funny thing. As you can see, there's two indoor areas because I want to keep the one mat, like give them a separate sleeping area because as far as I know, and please do correct me if I ever say something wrong when it comes to animals because I really don't know anything about animals. Actually, correct me if I say anything wrong at all, not just about animals. But I don't think that one mats, like they don't share burrows. They have all have their own burrows. So I wanted to give them each their individual indoor area and now there's a right indoor area and a left one like they're on either side there's two indoor areas they could get through the right door they couldn't get through the left door even though both doors were completely identical and like the terrain completely flat the walls like i made sure that like none of the like walls to the side of the doors were like interjecting or like going in through the door so like i have no idea why they couldn't get through the door and whatever i did it didn't work so eventually it was just like all right this needs to be larger so i made it double the size now they can get in to the left indoor area but really i like the smaller doors a little bit better even though in the end there's pretty much like you have the wood wall then you have two curved walls one I made into a rock wall to keep it a little bit interesting, but the one with the doors, I gave it just like it stayed a plain wall. So it actually works a little bit better with the bigger doors because it makes the wall a little bit more interesting instead of just having a plaster wall. Now when it comes to the entire Wombat building, originally it didn't have this design. Originally it looked like a freaking armadillo. And I'm not joking, it really looked like an armadillo. Like with the plating and such, it just looked like an armadillo a bit. And it was a fun idea. But then when I saw it built, when I saw it with all of the other buildings, because the Tasmanian Devil habitat and the Penguin habitat, and slightly also the Crocodile habitat, just because the building of the Crocodile habitat is close enough, those buildings all sort of combine into one big building in a way and then you had this armadillo thing to the attached to it and there's a thing with like design versus functionality like if you go really design heavy like go completely overboard on design then you basically built an art piece if you go really function heavy you have a block like you have a square box that is very functional easy to use because a lot of like furniture and such and just a lot of buildings are rectangular and square boxes but then if you go completely the extreme then you just have a blank box pretty much and the armadillo built or the armadillo design went a little bit too heavy on the design side so not only did it become more of an art piece but it also stuck out like a sore thumb and by sticking out like a sore thumb it destroyed all of the things surrounding it because all of the other builds like the penguin habitat build the tasmanian devil build again the crocodile's a little bit off because it's not directly attached to the other buildings but because the armadillo design was really so designed every was really so in your face all of the habitats that were attached to it could directly suffered from it because yeah you're going to look at the armadillo building and all of the other habitats are going to really pale in comparison but then on the other hand the armadillo building or design suffers from itself because it's sticking out like a sore thumb there's nothing really to make it feel one with the environment so in the end i decided all right this is a fun idea maybe later for like one of the like a tier habitats like the one instead really are supposed to stick out like maybe for like I don't know, a koala. Well, actually not. I have like an entire koala and platypus house in mind. But maybe for like a habitat or for a building where the building stands on itself, that's an interesting design. But because this building is supposed to be connected to the others, I decided, 
let's simplify the design let's go for the style that i've already been using so the curved walls the black roof with the, the nice trim and add a little bit of a thing to make it a little bit more gearing towards design but still blend in nicely enough with the other buildings that it feels like a cohesive building and not like just separate pieces glued together like i didn't want to build a collage i really just wanted to build a cluster if that makes any sense but anyway so as i said when it came to the wombat habitat i wanted it to be the wallflower because if you think of it the wombats are not going to be the s tier animals of naturalis or at least not of the australian area Th those roles are for the koalas the kangaroos the platypus and such the wombats are really more like in naturalis at least they are going to be the b tier animals and i frequently call them the overgrown hamsters because they kind of look like that so i wanted their habitat to be a bit more of a focus than the actual animal itself because when it comes to the wombats the habitat has to really do the main how do you call it like it has to be the main source of interest although as i said i wanted to still also be the wallflower of habitat so how do i do that i mean i placed a lot of solar panels on the roof of the building i also made the second roof like it has this fake roof on top of the actual functional roof it's not really a fake roof but it's more of a design roof like of course it's going to catch the rain and such but the actual separating roof like the roof that separates the inside from the outside is below it so that's going to draw a little bit more attention to this habitat just like the different shaped roof then you have the solar panels which you might say like oh the solar panels are not going to really draw attention but then all of the buildings so far are like beige and black and then you suddenly have the blue of the solar panels so that kind of draws attention i also realized very quickly of like i forgot to put in windows and you don't really want to forget windows in any of your zoo buildings or just any building in general because fuck that's going to be claustrophobic if you don't have any windows it will just feel like you're in a concrete prison then but then i moved on to the dry mode because this you can blame goron for because i saw goron's like big zberger recreation and he really went into like oh i want to and this is not his direct words but how i caught him was just like you know try and make all of the barriers or the fences really invisible so that it looks like you're in the habitat so i tried that of course a little bit more structured because that's just how i like to build these things but also it's kind of the style that i set up for naturalis but when it came to the dry mode i just made a tiny rope fence it is has a little bit of a slope so there's a slight thing of like hey this is the pot and this is the habitat and you're not supposed to go in the habitat although most likely little timmy will try and walk into the habitat because there's not a big fence like that's the thing that i always think about when it comes to like habitats it's like i don't know if i'm like keeping the animals safe or am i more just keeping dumbasses out of the habitat like that's the thing that i'm thinking about now of just like yeah do i really care about the animals no the animals will probably survive like if the lion gets out it will probably well might not survive because it might be you know for safety of the guests but it, like the animals will probably uh, be kind of fine at first if they get out of the habitat but the dumbasses that try to get into the habitat might not be because then there might be like a fall or something or maybe an aggressive or carnivorous animal which are usually a little bit more aggressive towards like guests dropping in their habitat so there's always that thing that i need to think about of like uh, this might be more like especially like let's say the tasmanian devil people might look at the animal and it's like oh yeah it's tiny it's not going to hurt me so i'm going to try and get close to it yeah don't so some habitats are really just set up in the idea of like this fence is not for the animals this fence is for you i know you karen i know you think that this 
one that is really cute and such, but they might still bite. And then you will scream bloody murder and go up to the zoo stuff of like, yeah, the one that bit me. And then I'm like, you, how did the one that bit you? There's a fence. How did you get in? And then you get arrested, probably. At least that's like the ideal ending, probably. Anyways, so as I said, there's just a tiny fence just to make sure that like, you know that you're not supposed to go in there. The walnuts are not going to get out here because there is this wall, this sort of dry moat vibe. So yeah, this fence is really just like an indicator of just like, don't get into the actual habitat. It's just an indicator of that, but it's supposed to give you more of a vibe of like you're in the habitat without actually being in the habitat. Although I think it's a wombat, like this is how much I look up the planet zoo or like the zoopedia. I think that you can actually have wombats as walkthrough animals, but I'm not sure. I never read the Superior. Like I, for one, at one point was thinking of like, oh yeah, let's invite other content creators and do like a Superior quiz. But I'm too chaotic to actually host that. So eventually that idea got dropped because it's like, yeah, I'm not going to be able to bring the right energy to that. But anyways, also, I want to quickly mention before we get into the habitat, my entry into Annex's zoo challenge or zoo, yeah, planet zoo challenge one. And you guys are not going to really get chicken nuggets. So I have to disappoint you there. But the first thought was really, oh shit, I need to buy a lot of chicken nuggets. I am happy to have one. Thank you guys. But uh, <laughs> I knew from the get go. I'm not going to get everyone chicken nuggets because you guys are all over the world and I know none of you. Like, that's the thing of like, yeah, I know you guys as commenters or such, but like, I don't personally know you. Like, there is this thing of like parasocial relationships where it's like, you guys might know a lot about me. I know nothing about you guys. So there's that. But I don't know why, like, the first thought was like, I need to buy a lot of chicken nuggets now. When I knew like right from the get go, I'm there's not going to be any chicken nuggets do i want chicken nuggets now actually not surprisingly i want a burrito that's mainly because i've lately been cooking burritos they're very easy you just well cooking burritos i've just been i had like the store-bought burrito like the what do you call it just a burrito and then i make the filling myself and then it's just easy anyways yeah i like cooking i, I just I like trying new stuff. It's also the reason why when I've... Like, I... You can, on one hand, count the amount of times that I've drunk this year. I'm not saying this month, not this week, this year. You can count it on one hand. But if I ever really want to drink, I never go for, like, a beer or, like, wine or anything. I want, like, a, one of those mixed drinks. And not the ones that, like, get you blasted off your ass drunk. I want those that, like taste fruity or flowery or something like i want to try stuff that's the thing i just want to try stuff that i've never tried before so that goes to cooking goes to drinking it also well eating because um i am the person who would try a fried tarantula i might be kind of eked about it at first but then i'm like huh what would it taste like yeah i have also eaten snail before because i am close to france so of course it's going to eventually or eventually it's going to occasionally show up here in grocery stores just as like um special thing like sometimes grocery stores or supermarkets here have that where there's just like american week where everything is oversized <laughs> i'm not joking everything that's like American style here is usually twice the size of the things that we would usually eat there. But yeah, you sometimes have those that I don't know where it was, but there was snails. And I tried them. They didn't taste bad. Like if you cook them correctly, they don't taste slimy at all. They're just, I mean, I wouldn't say overpriced, but it's just like it's so little for quite a lot. So little food for quite a lot of cash so it's really just kind of a snack but anyways back to the actual habitats <laughs> because otherwise we're going to talk about weird foods that i've eaten anyways when it comes to the habitat because the wombat is not really going to be like the main draw 
for this habitat because it's kind of just like it's kind of plain looking by itself so i wanted this habitat to really have the vibe of like oh this is a nice looking habitat oh there's a wombat there like this is really supposed to be the uh, habitat the wallflower of habitats as i call it but because of that I kind of went against like what I assume one mats would like. Again, let me know if I'm wrong. But when I think of one mats, I think of like grassy fields, valleys, maybe slightly hilly, but not really rocky terrain because of course they need to make their burrows or such. And I don't know if one mats really like rocky terrain for that. But when it came to the habitat, I did decide for like rocky or pebbly beach vibes like that's the entire idea of this app that was just like giving a little bit of beach but it's supposed to be like a rocky beach like this is not the beach that you go surfing or sunbathing this is the beach where you go with your friends and light like a bonfire or something it's not supposed to be like a swimming kind of beach if that makes sense and so i placed a lot of sticks i placed a lot of rocks just to give off that vibe of like, oh, the wish sticks wash the shore uh, and the rocks are just there. But to give a little bit of homage to like the grassy vibes, I placed so much grass. Like, too much grass. I think I could make a coffee shop in the Netherlands here prior to with the amount of grass that I placed. I also have never used drugs before, so <laughs> I don't know where that came from. But anyways... When it comes to the amount of grass, it's a little bit much, especially when it comes to herbivores. I always think of like, oh yeah, they are going to eat everything when it comes to plants that they can get their hands on. You can still then place plants in places where they like couldn't be able to reach them easily. So with the wombat habitat, there's like two rocky plateaus where they wouldn't be able to get them. So that's where I placed most of like the higher like the kind of more bushes, trees and such, because the wombats wouldn't be able to eat them before they fully grow. But when it came to the wombats, I also don't, I don't know, are they like fully herbivores? Like they do look kind of like, I mean, this is mostly because they look like hamsters and I think like, oh yeah, maybe grubs and such or fruits they would eat as well. It's not just grass and leaves. But when it came to the habitat this is something that i always do it's just like aesthetics will come over realism it's the same thing with like the kiwi bird habitat like yes it looks better this way than if i made it a complete indoor area or with the crocodiles where it's like oh yeah they won't be able to live here half of the year because it would be too cold although when it comes to the crocodiles i might actually because i have the idea of like a koala and platypus house because those are almost always inside especially with platypus they are like so sensitive that you want to be able to simulate their environment or their native environment as close as possible which you can't really do with an outside habitat but when it comes to the crocodiles i might actually place like a sort of fake habitat like a winter habitat for them inside and then in the summer they get transported to their outside habitat so Maybe crocodiles are my favorite animal then, because then they would actually have two habitats in Planet Zoo just in for everything. Whereas the red pandas will have one habitat for the entire year. And the crocodiles will have two. But anyways, back to the actual wombat habitat. So I placed a lot more grass than I would normally do in a herbivore habitat. Although I might go a bit more with the grasses in herbivore habitats as well. Because I really like the look of it. It's like not too much grass, but it does give it that like lush vibe. And and also this habitat is kind of a transition habitat because all of the other Australian animals that I have in mind are more inland. Like they are not really, at least when I think of them, are not really that associated with the beach. They are more associated more with like inland, like valleys and such or maybe rivers i'm probably going to go for a river vibe with all of the other hab animals so this served as a nice transition from that more beach vibe that definitely like the penguins have slightly the crocodiles and the kiwi birds have that beach vibe as well though the crocodiles have more of like an inlet like kind of more 
I don't know, like, not by you, but like, sort of an inland vibe. Inland, inlet. I don't know if I'm pronouncing it correctly, but it's like, they're not directly to the sea, but it's like, wherever they are, the water spills out into the sea, but it's not like a river or an inland lake. It's just kind of a dip in the water side or beach side. I don't know how to really correctly call it. But anyways, then we are ending up with just decorating the dry moat, or at least from the guest side. So again, the fence here is really just like an indication of like, this is the habitat, don't go over here. But it's not that in your face, and it's not really like trying to keep the guests out. Or at least it's not meant to like keep the animals in. Like, of course, the wall and the... What is it? The moat does that. But it's not really of like the idea is more here to keep the guests out. But also make the guests feel like they're part of the habitat. That they're inside the habitat. And so the fences are really just low to the ground and trying to be as invisible as possible. And a small bit of like the staff area. Because all of the buildings for this area are nicely clustered together so that you can have like the kind of staff area as i called it already i don't know why i'm trying to look up fancy words i'm not fancy at all i already call myself the wicked bitch of the east so i am not fancy i mean i constantly talk about chicken nuggets and i've talked about alcohol this i why am i trying to be fancy but anyways, that's going to be it for today's video. We're ending up with just decorating the roof because you can never go wrong with a green roof. But anyways, as I said, that's the end of today's video. If you liked it, throw a poop pebble at the like button. Actually, don't do that. Keep your pants on, please. Just throw a wombat at the like button instead. And if you want to see more, throw a rock pebble. Just for clarification, a rock pebble at the subscribe button. Have a wonderful day, guys. Bye-bye.